If you haven't seen part one to this series, you might want to go back and watch it first. I will make sure that the link to part one is in the description of this video. I know you guys have been eagerly anticipating the second part of this video, and I'm so sorry that I left you in a cliffhanger last time. I only did that because we still have another 50 minutes or so of nothing but this hearing footage. So follow along, guys. Let's get right straight to the point. I will be throwing in a few things along the way as we do this part of the video as well, because more facts have arisen since the last time we did anything on this. And in the end of this, I want you to tell me in the comments if you think that this county, Hardin County, Kentucky, is absolutely ridiculously spending tax money on frivolous cases from 25 years ago, or if you think that it's a good idea for the county to spend these types of resources to make sure they catch someone that could or may not have had one single joint back in 1998. Hope you enjoy. It gets crazy and the prosecutor gets way out of line. He was in jail and that was in the 1999 assault four case. He was charged with uh, assault fourth degree domestic violence in uh, uh, Brandenburg or Meade County in 1999. And that's not all. In this video, we're going to touch a little bit on where the elected official from Meade County, Kentucky, took the information that the prosecutor made me say on the stand, which is my private legal information, and doxed me on the internet with it. Sir, what's your date of birth? Sir, what's your uh, social security number? Do you know your driver's license number? And we learned a few things about the witness that was on the stand in the last video as well. Uh, Ma'am, state your name for the record. Sherry Brecton Wald. And this will be a good time to smash that subscribe button because it's absolutely free and I can't imagine anybody would want to miss any of this crazy stuff. Keep watching guys, let's go on and finish this hearing. I'm about to take the stand and I don't know what's going on in Hardin County. All I know is none of this makes any sense. Unless we're right that the Kentucky State Police are being covered up in the form of an actual, for real, conspiracy there you are hey, did he good. want to he's got our complaints there oh there you are i'm chris john i speak to john well you mind turning around put your hands behind back you have an active warrant for what from 1999 possession of marijuana Before we go right back to where we left off, let's do a short little brief recap of how we got here in the first place. See, I was at Post 4 to make a complaint on an officer by the name of Adam Sandage, who was one of the officers that partook in the beating of a young man who was not fighting or resisting at the time. Show me your hands now! Show me your hands! Show me your hands! On his knees with his hands in the air, this is Joshua Tyler, <laughs> who was pulled to the ground by a Hardin County Sheriff's deputy and punched repeatedly by this deputy, then kicked and punched by another deputy and a Kentucky State Police trooper. And they beat a boy that was laying on the ground, handcuffed backwards. The incident happened in February 2021. So we were at Kentucky State Police Post 4. I was with the father of the man who was severely beaten by the police for no apparent reason, and it was under an FBI investigation. FBI Louisville says it is reviewing the video and said it takes hundreds of civil rights cases each year and it is a responsibility that is taken seriously. When I spoke with the federal investigators, they had told me that nobody had put in a formal complaint on Officer Sandage, so 
I had gone to the state police post with Joe Tyler, the father, to make sure that that piece of paper would exist for the federal investigators, and this is what happened. There you are. Hey, Did he here. want to, he's got our complaints there. Oh, there you are. I'm Chris. John. I speak to John. Well, you mind turning around, put your hands behind back. You have an active warrant. For what? From 1999, possession of marijuana. Uh, you're full of shit. No, I'm not. No. Yeah, you Turn are. Around. I have never had marijuana. Turn around, put your hands behind your back. I'm going to give one more warning to anyone who's trying to watch this one who didn't watch the last one. The link to the first part of this video is in the description. I really hope you go back and watch it because where we're going to go right now is directly to where we left off from part one, which I am getting on to the stand in my own defense with my attorney, Mr. Thomas Clay, T. Clay, the man. Let's go ahead and just jump right into it. If you recall where we left off, the prosecutor had just summarized the entire case in which both of his witnesses admitted that they had never seen me before in their lives. However, they still tried to incriminate me, both of them. Well, we've got some information about that in this video for you. However, the prosecutor summarized his entire case. He had absolutely nothing, but... He is saying that he has duplicate signatures from two separate cases. One from the fake case that they're presenting here in Hardin County, and then the other is a case from Meade County, Kentucky, a year and a half later than what they're alleging this case is, was in actually in 1999. Now that case really was me, but the prosecutor is going to twist up some of the details to try to make me look bad, and it kind of worked, because... There's a lot of people out there who believe that I committed a domestic violence when actually the charges were for an assault. The two Meade County cases, a side-by-side -side comparison made by copying the various signatures, Your Honor. Do you wish to submit this in, into the record? I wish to submit this exhibit. Any objections Three. to Clay? Or two, I'm sorry. Yes, sir, I don't think they're specifically identified. Those signatures have been specifically identified. I understand there are a couple of signatures that are on the documents that have been tendered. But there are other signatures on that uh, document that have not been identified. I mean, the, the court, all those are already in the record. That's simply a... I will know what's in the record. You may continue. Uh, <clears throat> Your Honor, I, uh, I don't have any other witnesses or exhibits to present, uh, uh, other than, again, it's not an exhibit, it's in the court file, but the terms and conditions of probation. Uh, and so no other witnesses or exhibits. So no, Mr. Clay. <coughs> Your Honor, I'd move the court to deny the motion to revoke at this point on um, alternate grounds. First of all, they haven't proved the identity of the defendant. And that's a rather fundamental uh, step in a criminal prosecution. They have to identify beyond any doubt the defendant's the person identified in the motion to revoke. There is uh, supposedly a record from Hardin County regarding his arrest or citation or presentation to the court on this marijuana charge. And there's no picture, there's no fingerprints, there's no way to identify that the individual listed on those documents is the individual sitting over here at this table. There's also nothing to indicate that uh, he did not at some point in the past 25 years complete the program, that CAPS program, which was a condition of his probation. So given this lack of proof, I knew the court to deny the motion to revoke at this time. May I respond here? Of course, you may. Your Honor, if, uh, uh, if I could just kind of do a little level setting and make sure we're, we're on the same place facts-wise with that original case, Judge. On October, August 22, 1998, the defendant was charged with possession of marijuana, possession of drug paraphernalia, and he was cited to appear in court on September 13, 
1998, which was a Sunday. Let's stop here and take that in for a minute. Why in the hell would a police officer cite someone to show up to court on a Sunday? The file will show that the clerk sent out a notice on October 27, 1998 for the defendant to appear on September 14, 1998. Okay, did anyone catch that? On October 27th, the clerk sent a notice to a person to appear one month earlier on September 14th. Bear with me, Marty. All your questions will be answered. Roll yeah. tape. Okay. I will proceed. Uh, Doc, uh, is that a demo? Never mind that now. Never mind that now. Right. Right now. Is it normal for the clerks to tell someone to appear in court last month? The clerk sent out a notice on October 27th, 1998 for the defendant to appear on September 14th, 1998. You're about to hear whenever I get on the stand, they never had a valid address because the stupid officer was using a completely fake address on the entire citation in the first place. Anything that had ever been sent at all to that address would have never reached any human being at all. So what the prosecutor is about to allege next makes no sense. He's getting ready to say that someone showed up for court based on something being mailed that could have never reached anybody and that they were arraigned. Just listen. On September 14th, 1998, the defendant was arraigned. And the case was continued for a pretrial conference on September 23rd, 1998. On September 23, 1998, the defendant appeared with a private attorney, B.J. Holy Cross. And I know there's probably some pretty crappy attorneys out there, but what attorney would have their client plead guilty to one single marijuana cigarette in the kitchen cabinet of somebody else's house based on a case that has a fake address, all the facts are wrong, the name is misspelled, this doesn't make sense either. And not only have I never heard of anyone named B.J. Holy Cross, but I also have been researching trying to find a B.J. Holy Cross anywhere in the area of Radcliffe, Kentucky, and I cannot locate one at all. And in a plea of guilty to the possession of marijuana, the defendant signed the terms and conditions of probation in the court file. On October 8, 1998, Court is heard. The defendant met with Caps and signed paperwork at Caps on that separate date. On November 12, 1998, the defendant's court costs were paid in full. August 16, 1999, the court heard our office's motion to revoke probation for not complying. Notice had been sent to 35 Chester Lane. Now this may be the only thing out of the prosecutor's mouth that halfway makes any sort of sense because I did move to 35 Chester Lane in February-ish of 1999 from the state of Indiana, but had moved out and was long gone by April. So the prosecutor's saying that they sent something to an address that I actually did live at, but not until August. So nobody would have received that either. The funny thing is, is that I happened to have been carrying a very old ID in my wallet from 1999 at the day I was arrested at post four. You gotta wonder, did the cops get into my wallet and see that old address and add it to these fake ass records? Brandenburg, Kentucky an address which the defendant acknowledges in one of his motions to dismiss was the address on his driver's license. So that was an accurate address for him at some point, and that's where notice was sent, not to this Morgan Street address that they claim is, is bogus. And right here, either the prosecutor is playing dumb or he is dumb because we're all holding the exact same records and in all of my file, it's showing that only one service was ever sent to 35 Chester Lane and all of the other were returned by the Sheriff's Department because nobody responded and nobody was there because the address didn't exist. And how could anyone have ever showed up to court in the first place like the prosecutor is alleging because they were sending notices for going to court to an address that didn't exist. 
And then uh, the court revoked his probation because he did not appear, issued a bench warrant. January 3rd, 2023, he was served with that bench warrant. And Judge, he, he apparently claims that an imposter was the one charged in that case. And, and that just does not make sense. And why not? Why does that not make sense? Your Honor knows you've been doing this a long time. Um, it's not rare for somebody to lie about their identity to the police. That happens. Very often, the ones that get away with it are family members, often siblings, who know enough identifying information to seem credible. But in all those cases that I've ever seen, and I would guess that the court has seen, what happens after that arrest or citation? Imposters do not come back to court, Your Honor, at all, let alone multiple times, as was done in this case. Imposters do not hire private attorneys to appear with them in court. Imposters do not come to an appointment with CAPS on a separate date to sign the CAPS paperwork, as was done in this case. Imposters do not pay court costs at a later date, as was done in this case. But Judge, the most clear positive evidence we have are the matching signatures. Referring again to Mr. Ryder's letter to the court from back in January, or motion to dismiss, he references being in jail in Meade County. And Your Honor, I've reviewed the court and that in addition to the copies of uh, the cases submitted uh, as exhibits. Um, I only see one case in all of those where he was in jail, and that was in the 1999 Assault 4 case. Um, and there are two signatures in that case. There are two signatures in the 1998 traffic case. And there are two signatures in the Hardin County 98 possession marijuana case. Your Honor, you don't you don't have to be a meteorologist to know it's raining outside. And you don't have to be a handwriting expert to know the same person signed every one of those. That's the positive evidence. I acknowledge there is no photo because he wasn't arrested. There was no jail photo. But I believe, based on the burden of proof in a revocation case being beyond by preponderance of evidence, that there is ample evidence for this court to make a decision that he is the person and that he was in violation, just like Judge Coleman already found, uh, and to sentence him accordingly. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Mr. Clay, you wish to put on your case? Yes, sir. We want to call the defendant. Very well. Before we do that, some kind of housekeeping. Your motion uh, at this juncture, given the standard of proof requires overruled, Mr. Clay. So we can put on your case in chief now. If you would, you may call, you may call your witness. Yes, sir. Mr. Ryder, step to the podium if you would, sir. I think you got all this stuff. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, anyway, sir. Come step to the okay. Raise you your right hand. Do you swear you to you to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Absolutely. Take the stand, sir. Watch the difference, Corona. As you test, are you test for under oath? Speak to the microphone very clearly. Clay, you have the witness. Would you state your name for the record, please? Yes, sir. It's Christopher Ryder. May I approach the witness, Your Honor? You may, sir. I want to show you a document here that has been uh, prepared by the court and ask you to tell the court about that document and uh, your explanation for that. Show the court what it is. Yeah. Yes. See. The way I know this was when I learned of this case existing, this was the copy of the, the little envelope that they put the old record in that I got here from the, the clerk. And all the information that was crossed out was not information that pertained to me at all. And I updated the clerk with my current address, the address, I told her the address that I actually had back then. and had her spell my name right, 
and that's why it's going. What was the name that was on there? Uh, Ritter, R R E I T T R. Is that your name? No, sir. What address was on there? Uh, one three seven Morgan Street, lot two four six one, Radcliffe, Kentucky, four zero one six zero. Was that your address? I'd never heard of that address in my life, sir. Uh, you heard this officer testify. Uh, this former Radcliffe police officer testify about a run he made to a residence. Do you know anything about that run? I wouldn't know anything about that run other than what I've seen in these documents after doing it. Did you hear his testimony that it involved a welfare check of a juvenile? Yes, sir. Do you have any children? No, sir. Did you have any children living with you in 1998? Not at all, sir. And if you've been watching the channel, you might recall the video where official misconduct and I had gone to the child welfare office to retrieve these records and this is how we were met there who are you i'm the security guard i need to know who you are you don't need to know who we are we'll who identify. are you you have an id oh i'm not gonna give you my id i don't have to okay what you gonna do with that how you doing that's all i need about that gun on your side, you trying to be intimidating? Go ahead. I'm not gonna sit. I'm not a dog. Should I call the police? You can. Yeah, I think I'm gonna call the Okay, I'll call the police. Okay, I guess do that. Interesting. Um, we were being just no louder than we are right now. He kept coming up behind us with the gun while I was trying to fill this thing out. Sir, can I help you? Is there something I can help you with? Why are you trying to mess with us while we're trying to do our business? I don't feel comfortable with an armed man coming up behind us like this. Yeah, we were just waiting on them because they've never done this before. It's a 1998 case, and they didn't know that I could do a records request here for my case from 1998. Okay. So she got a little flustered. Okay. She's flustered. Are you guys good to go then? I think we're done now. They have their paperwork. I have their forms. So they should be good to go now. Well, I feel like we at least owe them an explanation. They were called and drove all the way over here. I yeah. think it would be kind of rude. And if there was a false them. report, then right. maybe they would want to handle that. So uh, how about let yeah, us handle this? this you were here the whole time, weren't you? When he walked up to you with his hand on his firearm for no reason, standing there peacefully talking to this guy, trying to conduct business, why he thought he needed his hand on his weapon. He wasn't a threat. He wasn't loud. He wasn't disrupting nobody. He was just talking to the man the voice he is now. Uh, did this officer come into where you were living on that night? No, sir. And this is something I believe is already in the record. That's a citation that indicates that the check was for a minor. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Uh, now, here's another document. I, this is already in the record, Your Honor, the citation. So here's another document that's a warrant. Uh, do you recognize that document? It's a warrant of arrest. No, sir. Uh, I, other than after the case, I do have it existing and be getting records. Whose name is listed on that warrant? It, it's spelled in credit. So it's spelled R-E-I-T-T-R, -T -T Christopher L. Is that your name? No, sir. What's the address listed on that warrant? 137 Morgan Street, lot 2461, Radcliffe, Kentucky. Have you ever lived there on that address? No, sir. I lived in Indiana. Uh, the next document is an affidavit for violation of probation. And I think you heard <coughs> that probate, former probation officer testify about that. Mm -hmm. That was mailed out. Was that mailed to your address? No, sir. Is that, what address is that listed on there? Uh, 35 Chester Lane, Brennanburg, Kentucky. Did you ever live there? I did live at that address uh, a year after all of this. Did you live there in 1998? No, sir. Or 1999? At the middle of 1999, I lived there for two months. Okay, did you receive that notice? No, sir. Uh, this is a release from custody. 
I don't know that, that we need to put that in there. This this was just recent. Uh, you were released from custody in 2023 when you were arrested. You were arrested in January of this year, is that right? That's correct, sir. And that's a release from custody? That's what I believe it to be. And uh, let me show you this document right here. What is this document attached to that release from custody? It would appear that this would be a summary of any type of um, record. A court net document. You don't. You probably don't know what court net is. I'm not very. <laughs> okay, let me have that back. I'm sorry. Uh, this is a notice and motion to revoke probation that was dated August the fourth, nineteen ninety nine. What address was that sent to? I don't see an address. Oh, uh, it says thirty five Chester Lane, Brandenburg, Kentucky. Were you living there then? What is the date on this? 1999. Uh, I'd need to know what month. Fourth day of August. I do not believe so. Okay. Um, 25 years is a long this time. This is the terms and conditions of probation. And is, is that name on there listed as defendant? Is that spelled correctly? It's spelled R-E-I-T-T-R. Is that your name? No, sir. Um, this is apparently the arrest slip from this year from KSP. Um, here is a criminal summons that was uh, sent to you, or I say sent to you, it was sent out. Um, is that is this the same? No, that's a different one. All right, read to the court the name of the individual there and the address. R E I T T R Christopher L one three seven Morgan Street, lot two four six one, Radcliffe, Kentucky four zero or yeah four zero one six zero. What's the date on that? Right here. I'm sorry, my eyes are getting bad as I get over here. Uh, September 14th, 1998 at 9 a.m. Okay. And here's another warrant of arrest. Uh, how's the defendant's name spelled on that? R-E-I-T-T-R, -T -T Christopher L. And the address? 137 Morgan Street, Lot 2461, Radcliffe, Kentucky. And what's the date on that? August 16th, 1999. There is another criminal summons here. Uh, and again, I don't want to belabor the point, but is that your name on there? It's not spelled the same as my name. What's the address? 137 Morgan Street, Lot 2461, Radcliffe, Kentucky. Now, those signatures uh, that have been tendered by the prosecution, are those your signatures? No, sir. When you found out that this run to this address, wherever it was, was based on a uh, complaint involving a juvenile, did you take steps to find out if the cabinet had any records of a welfare check in your name? Absolutely. I want to show you these documents here. And, uh, I think the Commonwealth indicated they had no objection to them, Your Honor. So these are... I'll point out that I don't believe you're certified, but that's fine, Judge. No okay. So moved. Okay. Uh, just tell the court what you did and what response you received for the Cabinet for Health Services. Well, I went to Kentucky's Department of Child Services and Family Services to see if there was any records that might indicate anything about this case. So I asked for all records that might have involved my name, my Social Security number, my anything that there was about me, including the person that I dated from that long ago. And they responded with this. Well, they responded with that there were no records available because it didn't, there were none. 
So then I asked if they would, you know, verify that, and they sent this to me in an email, and it's saying that they ran everything, my name, uh, the girl that I dated back then's name, uh, date of birth, social security numbers, um, and that they were unable to, to find any files through the Kentucky Department and Library of Archives involving me. Did that uh, search they did include the historical files? That's what it says here. We'll read that for the record, if you can. You want me to hold it back for you a little bit? So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, my eyes are getting that. Receive your Let me read it. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry if I read it, Your Honor. The Department for Community-Based Services, DCBS, Record Management Branch, RMB, has received your request for records. Please be advised that we were unable to locate any records after searching by your name, last, first, date of birth, and or social security number, or by searching for the parameters of the alleged victim you named Garcia, Alexis Garcia. We are also unable to locate any historical files for you at the Kentucky Department for Library and Archives. If you have any questions, please call. And did you receive that on or about October the 12th of this year? Yes, sir. Was there another uh, letter that they sent you on the same day uh, that indicated they had no records that they could tie you to any incident involving what was alleged in that criminal complaint? Yes, sir, that's correct. And then there was another uh, letter they saying they were gathering information here. Um, so. Judge, I would like to tender these documents and uh, have I missed anything? I don't think so. Yeah, I have no further questions. Have you had a chance to review those I, documents? I can glance at them briefly, Judge, and I guess my only you will check for any purpose to Mr. Moore before you go into the record. If you can so publish to Mr. Moore. So you can go on the record. Sure. Judge, my only objection, I guess, on these were not, let me show you the ones that we're moving Oh, oh I see. All the ones that you're moving to introduce into the record. And, and after you had a chance to review them, I'll see if you have an objection. Yes, so what, the, what that objection would be. Yes, sir. I think most of this is already in the court file, but as to these cabinet letters, I guess my only objection would be relevance because there's not been any allegation or assertion that the, there was cabinet involvement that day. He, uh, the officer testified they could have got a welfare check request from a variety of sources. He doesn't know. So, so basically what the prosecutor is saying here, that if a cop is called to a residence at 3 a.m. in the morning to check on the welfare of a child and finds drugs, that he's not going to document that? As to these cabinet letters, I guess my only objection would be relevance because there's not been any allegation or assertion that the, there was cabinet involvement that day. He, uh, the officer testified they could have got a welfare check request from a variety of sources. He doesn't know. So I'll note that, that, for, I'll note that for the record. Yes, sir. That's all I have. Mr. Moore, you have the witness. Thank you, sir. Sir, what's your date of birth? Oh. Sir, what's your uh, social security number? All right, and what about your, um, do you know your driver's license number? You, uh, the citation you looked at a minute ago, all those identifiers are present on that, correct? I'd have to see that again. Yeah, I believe so after research. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. I'm just getting a little. I see you looking back down at it. Those are correct. Thank you. Um, and um, I think Mr. Clay asked you about this terms and conditions of probation, asking you about the misspelling of your name at the top. Um, this signature 
Uh, that only that's spelled correctly, isn't it? You're asking if it's spelled correctly? Yes, sir. Yes. I'm Thank you. Thank you. Um, you, uh, you were charged with uh, assault, fourth degree domestic violence in uh, uh, Brandenburg or Meade County in 1999. Is that correct? And here's where the prosecutor is going to try to paint me out to be a woman beater because he added in domestic violence. The charge was for an assault, not a domestic violence. So I probably should have caught that a little stronger in court, but I did catch it. Yes, in 1999. Uh, you were arrested for that, is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Um... I, I don't know, recall the actual charges. And probably the reason I didn't catch his little slip up quickly is because here's the part that I was expecting. Uh, and uh, let's see, uh, you were released from jail on a $1,000 cash bond, is that right? That is incorrect. That is not correct. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, is that the bond paperwork that you signed in 1999? Yes, I have been questioning this paperwork. Okay. So I didn't you know. The answer is no, I did not sign it. That does not look like a signature. Okay. Okay. So you acknowledge the case, the charge, but you deny signing paperwork to get out of jail. Well, I didn't get out of jail. I, not until after the final hearing. I didn't bond. As we saw in part one, all of you saw exactly what happened whenever I tried to go get a copy of that forged document over in Meade County. This is it. This is where I go. Hello, how are you today? All right, got a bunch of business to do with you. Okay. Um, I am Chris Ryder. I've called here several times. Okay. And I have court tomorrow, and they're trying to use records from here, from a 1999 case that was me here in 1999, in which I went to jail here. Okay. Um, so I've gotten some of those records, some of your all's records, mm -hmm. and we need to, A, do some comparing what I've got to what you've got. Okay. And B, I've got a lot of questions about what's here. Okay. So I might be a few minutes and I don't mean to okay. give you any trouble, but that's, I got to do this. Okay. So can you pull my original file that you have so that we can compare okay. what I have to what you have? Ellen, Ellen is on her way to speak with you. Oh, thank you. So if you just want to wait a little while, so you can see you need to be completely yeah. down. Yeah. Yeah. What? She'll, she'll Excuse in. me? She'll come in and talk to you. What did you just tell her that for? She's being very helpful. You don't tell people to leave. Don't leave. Uh, you've been great. What's wrong with you? Who is that? What's her name? That woman just told her to stop helping me. Wait for our car to get Yeah, but why did you tell her that? She needs to walk away. No, she does not need to walk away. Who are you? Who are you? Are you Yes, it is my business. What? Who are you? Deputy Whitey. Nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you. But if you start making them feel uncomfortable and stuff, I can tell you to leave. Well, hold on, sir. And if you refuse to leave, I'll arrest you for disorderly conduct. You already threatened me with arrest? Oh, no, I'm not threatening you. Trust me. Well, why did you just say that? That's not a threat. Let I don't me, make threats. Let me go. Get, what is that? You get promise? your copies. And then no, I don't have no. I need more than copies. I'm waiting on Ellen. Let them tell you the you truth. Get your copies and y'all can go. I'm not going anywhere. Oh, yes, y'all. Oh, no, I won't. One way or another. I will not. I'm not leaving until I get my record. Who are you again? I'm Chief Deputy Whitey with the Sheriff's Office. Chief Deputy. And you don't know to, to treat the public better than this? What are you doing this for? This is my record. I got court tomorrow. Get your copies. You won't. I will. You get your copies. I don't just need copies. If you knew what was going on. You're not going to keep these ladies up I'm not keeping them up there doing nothing except for their job. You, I can't you don't know, do you know I do job? know their job, yes. This you, is what, what I'm sent for job? from Frankfurt. What is the job of the circuit court clerk? To go over these records with me. 
Oh, what to is? explain them. To explain them to she you? Yes, yes. She handles documents, she makes copies, she Look up, she took the that. Open Records Access for him. Show me that. Or just tell him the statute. You look it up. Show me that. You look it up. No, you Kentucky statute to open records. Tell him the, the number. Show me. You know her job open records, better than I, I do. Show KMRS me. I know this is the clerk's office, something. and these are clerk's records, and, and this not? has questionable. So what is her talk. job? This has questionable stuff. What is her job? To you tell me what this is about. Question. You don't want answers from everybody else, but you don't want to give answers. What are you talking what about? How is it our job to tell you what job is? What are you talking about? You said... Did you come you in here to escalate the situation? Well, I'm not escalating nothing. The hell you aren't. You, you know what you ought to do? You ought to go on and get dismissed. Just you get on out of here. Really? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's just go oh. to jail then. For this for what? Oh, Excuse man. me? No, I Hold up. Get your hands off of him. That's my record. Get your hands off of him. Why are you shaking so bad, bro? Don't you touch me. If you touch me, you're going to be in a pickle. Do not touch me. I wouldn't laugh. Don't touch me. Hey, that... You just messed Remember up. Gold, messed up. You want to go? Hey. I, I would not do that if I were you. What are you going to do? Don't fucking really? get Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is unnecessary. You want to get You want to get And I don't remember the charges, so I can't verify those either. I'm sorry. Okay. Um. Do you remember you were charged with some type of assault charge? I don't remember the charges. At all? I don't remember what they were on on the case. I do not remember the charges. You know you were arrested? Yes, that's that's true. But you don't know what the charge was? I don't remember the charges. I really don't. Okay. Well, if the record suggested it was assault, do you dispute that? Um, no, I wouldn't dispute that it could have been. Okay. You mentioned a girlfriend at the time. What was her name? So, um, if the document says cash po bail posted thousand dollars, five hundred feet away from, does that ring a bell? Does that sound like the case you're involved with? You're asking me if that's what's on the document. I, that's what's on the document. Does that? I'm asking you. Does that ring a bell? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm misunderstanding the question. Yes, that's what this says. Okay. Uh, do you recall that? From that case? From the case? Yeah. Yes. So when I left court, I agreed to have no contact with her. Okay. Uh, but you do not believe you came back to court on a couple weeks later or nine days later? Sir, I was already in the jail and, and came out from the jail to that court date. Oh, okay. All right. Is that what the video shows? We're waiting on the video to come back. And at this point, that video did come back finally, and it does show that I had been in the jail the whole time. We'll go over that later on the channel. That is what the video will show. Just messy the other exhibit. Oh, sorry. The 98. This is actually Meade County matter. Yes, sir. Go right ahead. You also need this as well. Um, uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, do you recall uh, being charged with uh, careless driving, suspended operator's license, and no insurance in uh, Meade County, I think in Muldraw? Uh, August 13th, 1998? I can only remember being pulled over in ball draw around that approximate time. Okay, I don't know. Because I, I had a CDL at the time, and I had to uh, do some stuff to make sure it didn't affect my CDL abilities. Okay, okay. Uh, but do you recall this case? Well, I've just answered because I don't recall 20-some years ago. Okay. Yeah, I, I remember being pulled over in Muldraw sure. 20 some years sure. ago, and I don't remember exactly what it was for. Okay. All right. I actually thought it was speeding. Uh -huh. um, who lives at 246 Leah Way? And right about now is where I actually wish I did have a time traveling DeLorean because 
I didn't realize that the prosecutor was slipping in a completely different address at the time, and I thought he was referencing the 137 Morgan Street, lot 2461 at this time. I have no clue. Um, I went to that address after I seen this, realized this case existed, and I was told by the manager and owner of the of the uh, trailer park that the that the buildings, the, the trailers that are on it, don't go past 205. So there's no way either one of those two numbers. That's what I was told by the owner. Okay, well, um, but that 246 Lee Away address. Did you catch that? It's a completely different address than every bit of the record. Is that your anything. address? No, never I've never. Uh, I lived in Indiana. Do you have any explanation as why there's an insurance card with that address and your name on it? That is that is my ex-girlfriend's name right and, there. And uh, that's also your name, right? Well, I didn't okay. have insurance with her. I wasn't married to her. Okay, but that's your name and that's an address that you say you were never at, correct? I'm sorry, can I... See that again, please? Just because I've never seen this, and I wouldn't understand why she would have insurance and have my name on her driver's insurance. And looking back on it, maybe she did live on Leah Way. I don't know how that's relevant, other than the fact that it does have 246 in that address. It's not the same as everything that was on all these court documents, which was 137 Morgan Street, lot 2461. And if it proves anything, I never did live with her and I certainly didn't have insurance with her. It might prove that someone was forging my information. That's what it looks like to me, is that she got insurance and put my name on her driver's insurance. Okay. And then there is Yes. You remember her living at that address at no, some point? No, not. Okay. Okay. Uh, do you remember being required to show proof of insurance to the court? To the court? Mm -hmm. um, As an, on an order of probation? Can I see it? That's it okay. right there. No, I do not remember this at all. Okay, and you deny that's your signature, is that right? I, that's not, it doesn't look anything like my signature. Sorry. And I wish I could show you guys how far off these signatures are from my actual signature, but there's no way I'm going to put a picture of my actual signature on this video because J.J. Scarborough, the elected official for the county corrections over in Meade blasted all of my legal information from this video on another YouTube channel with a guy who is a career criminal and was even charged with murder at one point. Let's go over just a little of that and I'll save the rest for another video. I would like for all of you to meet uh, Mr. J.J. Scarborough. J.J., can you hear me, sir? Yes, sir. Can Good evening, Mr. Scarborough. Pleasure to talk to you again. Well, thank you, Ranger. It's nice to finally sit down and have a good conversation with you. It's Absolutely. Nice I appreciate you reaching out to me last night. And here, JJ admits to reaching out to the career criminal to give him a copy of the unredacted court video where my full name, legal full name, social security number, driver's license number, and address was all on the unredacted footage that was given to this idiot. And I promise you, I won't do anything to, you know, to to betray that, that trust and that faith. <laughs> okay. And now JJ gets to learn that a person with a career like Wrangler is going to betray that trust really quickly because he just got JJ wrapped up in a felony for sharing my information that way, using his position as an elected official to get unredacted footage and blast it all over the World Wide Web. But the good news is because it's so close in time, we know that we made two recordings we know one was for you all, mm -hmm. and one was for the uh, Meade County Detention Center. The Meade County Detention Center. So that would be the elected official, J.J. Scarborough? 
you are the elected jail administrator for Meade County, Kentucky, yes? Yes, that's correct. Uh, Judge, I have a question. Mr. Clay? No, thanks, sir. Is that your case? Yes, sir. Say me step down. Thank you, sir. I understand that the primary claim by the defendant is this case involves a person that's not me. Correct. Yes, sir. That's, that's what this is. Not me. That's the defense. The issues you have on your side is a 25-year-old case that should have been vanquished long ago in the two-year probationary period for a, for a misdemeanor offense. stayed by the probation violation notification filed back in 2000, 1999. No one can remember this gentleman over here, but I'm sure there's one guy that would remember. I'm shocked he's not here to testify, and I'm shocked he's not here to identify, or not to identify, because he can certainly bear witness to either Mr. Moore's case as being correct, or Mr. Clay's case as being correct. He's a friend. He's a colleague. We're pretty close. He's also upstairs most days. Matter of fact, I saw him as I was leaving to go to get something to eat. Mr. Moore, who am I talking about? Maybe you're talking about Judge Simcoe? The Honorable John Simcoe. You know why I can say that? Because Mr. Simcoe is now the sitting circuit judge for the Harden Circuit Court. He's also happened to be the county attorney's office during that same time frame. So we have eyes that can lay on Mr. Ryder to say, yeah, mm, I think that'd be him. No, that ain't him. So now I'm left to try to figure out a set of incredible circumstances here, not so incredible, as to whether or not this gentleman is in fact Christopher L. Ryder, the same Christopher Ryder that was charged in 2098 with these offenses. There are some subsequent concerns that I have that, about the case, quite frankly, that don't involve the defense raised by Mr. Ryder. And that's something I need to wrestle with as I review this case. Because quite frankly, Mr. Moore, it has nothing to do, it doesn't, it's, it's, it's a sidebar, but a very important sidebar to this case, aside from the fact that uh, the issue of the identity of Mr. Ryder, whether it's him or not him that day. Because the basis for the affidavit and the basis for the probation revocation had to do with a certified affidavit filed by at that time, an organization known as, known as CAPS. And we heard the testimony of the witness here, who I happen to know was, was a court official for me many years in adjoining county. Whoa! He's talking about the lady that was on the stand who tried to falsely identify me and incriminate me in a crime that I didn't commit. Uh, Ma'am, state your name for the record. Sherry Brechtenwald. All right, and back in... 1998-99, uh, did you work for the Kentucky Alternative Programs Court Monitoring Office? I did. Okay. Um, and I don't have a whole lot of questions for you, but just to identify a couple of documents. Uh, Judge, I believe you referenced this uh, connected to the motion. It's, uh, I did. And I just want to... Show that to the witness. That's a copy. Can you tell the court uh, what that is, what that document is? It's a um, d um, 
form that he signs agreeing to undergo random drug Your Honor, I, I have to object. I apologize for objecting, but there's a signature on that document. We can test whether the defendant signed that. I will acknowledge there's a signature on there, but we're certainly not going to concede that it's Mr. Reeder's signature. The judge here just informed us that that witness was not just the person who filed for this CAPS issue with the revocation and tried to get me thrown in jail, but she's also an official for the Meade County Courts. And we heard the testimony of the witness here who I happen to know was, was a court official for me many years in adjoining county. So I'm familiar with, I don't think her last name was the same then it is now, and her, her hair seems a bit lighter than it was then. But I do know the individual. But unfortunately, I also know the organization. I've had a lot of dealings with them over the years. So my concern has nothing to do with your case per se. You know what my concern is. I'm going to have to mull this over because assuming that I believe, I disbelieve your position, Mr. Clay, with your client, I've got to figure out if I believe or disbelieve not Mr. Moore, not the county attorney's office, but the affidavit and the organization itself that served Hardin County during that time frame. And we're going to have to do some more digging because it sounds like the judge is saying that that time frame for that organization, CAPS, was a complete disaster. And I've got my reasons for saying that. The long and storied, Mr. Moore is probably familiar with as much as I am. Because we were forced to unravel a lot of themes that took place during that same time frame, uh, several years after. But the practice was in place for years prior to the discovery of the practice or practices. So I've got to mull that over as well. And when I'm moving over, there's one more thing I've got to take a look at. Something that every folks, every my daddy told me when I was a kid. Son! He's a Jew for Squeeze. That's a Hart County thing. Sometimes we want to get it someday. All right. Uh, I'm going to move this case over. Uh, there is, if there is permission, this is a copy. Of this is a, there's not a record. I'm assuming Mr. Moore and Mr. Clay, you'd have absolutely no concerns because it makes your case, or it makes your case. Have the, the Honorable John Simcoe take a, gan, a, a gander at this uh, mug. And if, quite frankly, if he can't identify it, then I'm not going to give any, any reference at all. If he, if he says it's not him, the case is over with. If he says it is him, I still got more of the other issues that I'm concerned about that have nothing to do with your, your testimony, but has everything to do with the uh, not the witness, but the witness's organization. We have no objection to doing that, Your Honor. I have no objection, Judge. I, I just assume nobody 25 years ago is going to remember oh, I one would. way or the other. But. Oh, I would. Mr. Hayden, you think I would? <laughs> Unfortunately, I would. That's not a good thing. Sometimes you want to forget, but I don't. So I will note submit it. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Ryder, it's good seeing you, sir. Uh, so that I'm clear, if I, if Mr. Uh, if the Honorable Judge Simcoe can quantify the, without doubt, identify Mr. Ryder as the individual in question, that doesn't mean this case still is won by Mr. Moore. Because I've got to look over some other issues that was not as part of the testimony, but the court has knowledge of. That is, the practice of caps for those years. Yes, sir. If, Mr. Moore, yes, sir. it's not him, that's pretty obvious what I'm going to do. Yes, sir. Anything else? Anything else? No, if sir. Not, no, good to see everybody in. Have Thank a good you. day. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, by the way, Mr. Moore and Mr. Clay, I'm not that brilliant. I have to, saw, I have to, have to see Mr. Sim, Judge Simcoe in the elevator. And, uh, and uh, I mentioned I had a case coming up. He asked what case. I said, right. I said, oh, remember that case? Now, whether or not it's you or not is a different issue. 
Well, we'll never object to the court taking more time to think about this decision. Thank you, sir. Good seeing you again. <coughs> Have a good day, everyone. Thank, Thank you, Your Honor. Come on, let's submit it. Thank you. And this time the cliffhanger is not my fault because the judge still uh, has not made a final decision that I know of yet. But the hearing is over. The trial is over. The only thing that it could end up resulting in is a decision that we don't agree with and potentially an appeal. However, it doesn't sound like the judge is going to make that choice. I'm pretty sure that it's obvious that this thing is going to get dismissed. Make sure that you hit that subscribe and notify button because the next video on the channel should be the entire video of where elected official from Meade County Jail, J.J. Scarborough, gets busted in a felony. Love you all. See you on the next one. Did you come you in here to escalate the situation? Well, I'm not escalating. The hell you are. You, you know what you ought to do? You ought to go on and get dismissed.